Leia built her sandcastle below the tide line. Kai warned her, naturally. What else was an older sister for? When Leia chose her spot and planted her flag, Kai said, It'll drown. That last word tugged at her, as if it left a hook in her lip. She almost apologized, stopped herself. Drown was the right word. You couldn't avoid words just because they hurt. When Leia sculpted the gap-toothed ramparts of her keep, like castles from the kind of Schwarzwald fairy tale picture books where kids got eaten, Kai said, you see, that's the tide line up there where the seaweed's drying. When Lei carved a curtain wall with a bright blue trowel, packing wet sand between her palms, Kai said, your wall's too thin to keep the water out. It's not to keep the water out, Lei said. It's to keep out our enemies. You don't have enemies. Lei shrugged and continued to dig her moat. Mom wasn't there to help. Today was a mourning day. She'd gone with her sisters to Kai's father's grave to paint her face with ashes and sit naked alone until tears came. She'd grieved with her children, noble and sharp in mourning white, the day the bearers brought her husband home. She stood chin out, brow high, eyes bright and black, impassive as a penitent on the outside. Each body holds multitudes, the old song sang. As a mother, she helped her children mourn their shipwrecked father. As a wife, as a woman, as someone who had lost a friend, she needed time alone to break. She left Kai in charge because Kai was older and because Kai didn't set fire to things just to see what color they burned. <laughs> but Lei had only the vaguest grasp of the meaning of the phrase in charge. And Kai knew better than to test her younger sister on this point. She still had bruises from the last time she'd tried. <laughs> so Kai left Lei to work and climbed the beach to build her own castles clear of the coming waves. The sand was drier here, did not pack so well, so she brought a halved coconut shell to the surf, filled it with water, and carried it up the beach to moisten the sand. She built the spreading bay city like Kavakana, with a mountain behind it like Kavakana Eye and studded the shoreline with pebble statue penitents watching seaward for the return of long-gone gods, heroes, fathers. Each time she went back to the ocean, her sister's city had grown. Lay excavated alleys with her fingertips and cut decorations on rooftops with a sliver of bamboo. From above, her city looked intricate as a craftwork diagram or a work of high theology. Lay, kneeling, brooded in her swimsuit, brows low as if to cut off the half of the world that did not concern her. The beach, the volcano rising inland, her sister. She bit her lower lip as she worked. You have to do something, Kai said. She chose her words carefully. That was the joy of words. You could control them when all else failed. Or the whole thing will fall down. Up the beach, bigger kids shouted and screamed. A pale-skinned Iskari tourist girl dove to return a volleyball serve and fountain the sand where she fell. The sea lay calm to the horizon, but no one swam. The red flag was up today, gallow glass swarming beneath the water with their long, stinging tendrils, though they could not be seen from shore. White sails bellied on the bay. Cutters and dinghies and barks wheeled in defiance of the massive container ships moored near West Claw at the deep water port. You aren't listening. Lei did not look up. Fine. Let Lei build her dune city. Kai marched back up the beach. She added houses to her island and dug its bay deep for the tide rolling to fill. Standing, she judged it good. Then she turned back. Lei's castle sprawled on shore. She'd worked out in a spiral from that central keep, spread townhouses and factories, extended her lanes as she came round to them again. Kai knew the world she had built from sand, but she knew Lay's world too, though she had never seen it before. Those broad thoroughfares with divided roads and sidewalks were commercial streets, no processional boulevards, down which emperors once marched in triumph, bookended by arches. There were palaces, those high temples, here a factory. To the north, alleys grew so narrow, Lay could not have made them with her fingers, must have dredged them with her bamboo strip. She had found a dream city inside them both and made it real and the tide rolled in. Lay's hands never stopped. 
The rest of her knelt rigid beside the district she shaped, while her thin fingers carved and built and stroked sand smooth. Kai grabbed her coconut shell, ran below Leia's city, and started to build a wall. She built artlessly because art was not the point. She did not know why Leia ignored her, why she made this weird familiar city. She did not know why Lei left glittering traces of her soul in the ramparts beneath her fingers. But she suspected. She could have asked Leia, taken her by the shoulders and shaken her and screamed until she stopped and tried to explain. But Leia's face reminded Kai of moms in morning white, and the words she might say if Kai forced her to speak were words Kai knew she could not bear to hear. So she built the wall. She built it with her hands, with her own surging shoulders and legs, with mom's thick fingers and dad's fierce grit. She scudded the sand with her shell. The sun burned her eyes and warmed her skin and covered her with sweat. Boy! A voice called to her in Iskari from up the beach, the volleyball girl, drunk in a white bathing suit. Boy, you can't stop the tide. Kai ignored the girl, whose friend shushed her and tried to explain. Kai's wall was more of a hill, really, with a moat behind it deep as Kai was tall. She judged the wall's height against the tide line and started to curve up slope to guard the outer edges of Lay's city. She sweat and trembled. There wasn't time. She could not close the eastern wall before the tide rolled in. She knew this and didn't let herself know, because if she knew, she would have stopped trying. An audience gathered up the beach, tourists and other monsters drawn by the two girls striving in the sand. A skeleton in a flower print shirt watched them, rolling a newspaper into a tighter and tighter cylinder between his finger bones. Kai ignored them and kept fighting. The water rose as she built the wall. Every wash of surf bore more sand from the wall back out into the deep. Kai wasn't patting her sand down now, just digging it, tossing it up, hoping. Behind her, a wave splashed into the moat. Wet sand stuck to Kai's feet. She sank. The wall cracked. Salt rivers poured in and soaked her to her waist. The north wall sloughed into the water. Kai scrambled to shore it up, but the next wave tore her feet out from under her. She went down in a tangle of limbs and foam. Waves and cross currents tossed her, tumbled her, and she spilled from the moat onto the beach. She spat out salt water and sand, and when she recovered, she looked back, expecting disaster. But Leia's city stood. The waves covered it and drained away through carved alleys that should have collapsed like Kai's wall. Lay stared down through the water and the wash, and her city did not die. Lay's soul shimmered in the sand. She'd built herself into this city, mixing soul stuff into the sand with water, and now she stood above this world she'd made and willed it kneel against the waves. The sand held its shape. The city sank but stayed. It would not break while she had breath. Lay stood like a goddess over her creation while the tide rolled in. She stretched out her hands as if to calm the waves, and for a moment Kai thought they might obey. Then Lay fell screaming into the dirty water. She gasped, surfed, gagged, choked, disappeared in the foam. Kai ran into the water, caught her flailing sister around the shoulders, and dragged her to dry sand. Lay coughed up fluid, screamed again, though she had no breath. A white phosphorescent thread, thread wound around her leg, menacing and tiny, a gallow glass tendril torn free and set drifting on the tide in search of victims, probably not fatal. Kai gloved her hands in a gob of seaweed and peeled the tendril, tendril free. Snot ran from Lay's nose, and her eyes rolled white behind slit lids. She breathed deep and fast. Venom leaked through Kai's makeshift glove and burned her palm. With a tendril gone, Lay stopped screaming but didn't open her eyes. Kai slung her sister's arm over her shoulder and pushed up with her legs. She took three steps, stumbled into water. Building the wall had left her exhausted. She could not take Lay's weight. She ground her teeth and tried to wheel herself upright. She stood too fast. Someone else held Lay's other side. The Ascari girl in the white suit, the one who called her, Boy, she said again, Ascari, what was she doing? Kai had not expected that question. She didn't think the Ascari expected it either. She was scared of screams, that was all. She didn't know why Lay fell. Easy to see she'd never suffered a gallow glass sting before. They'd leave a bright red scar on that sharp, pale skin. The girl was embarrassed, like tourists sometimes felt when they helped or even noticed locals, talking to cover her nerves. Playing, Kai replied in the girl's language, and didn't correct her about the other part. The girl helped her carry Leia up slope. The crowd drew back as they approached, clearing space on the boardwalk. They set Leia down with care beside a discarded resort brochure. The skeleton watched them both from behind Ruby's spectacles, a newspaper still clutched in his hand. 
He could have done something, Kai thought, a craftsman like that, all the power in the world at his call. Lightnings danced when he crooked his finger. He could have stopped the pain at once. He adjusted his spectacles instead. A lifeguard shouldered through the crowd. The girl asked, why did she stay when the tide rolled in? Kai didn't answer. The lifeguard bent low, took a charm from his neck, and applied it to the sting. Blood seeped through torn skin, but at the charm's touch, the flesh calmed, blood stilled. Leia stopped shaking. She drew her first even breath. She wanted to save it, Kai said. Her voice hooked after save. Speaking Ascari forced her to gender the pronoun, and she was not sure whether she chose right. She remembered Leia's expression like mom's unwavering and fierce as pallbearers approached the gate. She could have said save him. Behind her, the sun set and the tide rolled up, the ocean at ease as if it had never killed a man. The parapets and pinnacles of Leia City melted, its arches seeped out into the deep. Salt water filled Kai's model bay, and her tiny penitent stared out over the flat, poison water. Save what? the girl asked. But Kai wasn't sure, and if she knew, she would not say.